Hey friends, welcome back to another Devo. And today we're going to look at the word truth as we read from Philippians 4, 4 through 9. And as always, I encourage you to read it yourself and to ask God to show you something from this to help you in your daily lives. So remember, read it yourself. Ask God to show you something. But as always, before we begin, let us pray. Dear Lord, we just pray for those who are watching, Lord, that they get wisdom from this, they get understanding from this, that you bless them and bless their minds as they receive this information and as they read your book and that they understand, God, what you're trying to teach them and to teach me. And we thank you for this opportunity. We get to come together, Lord, through the, the wonders of technology. God, we just pray for understanding hearts today and we just pray that we understand what we're getting into and what we're reading and Lord we thank you so much for your beautiful book for this word this truth that you have given us uh, so Lord we just want to say we love you and we thank you in Jesus wonderful and holy name amen all right so let's get started so today we hear and see all kinds of truths right the actual truth is that many have taken this word, the word truth, and twisted it and made it flexible, right? To fit a person's emotions and situations, okay? We see this a lot in our schools. People feel they should be a certain way, so their truth is that's how they are. And we're seeing this all over the place, not even just in schools, everywhere. Well, we know that Jesus himself says in John 16, 13, but when, he, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you to all the truth. So how does, so how, do, if this is going to uh, guide us to truth, how does one distinguish opinions and situations from actual truth? Just because someone says it, does it really make it true? Just because someone thinks it or feels that way doesn't make it true. How do we distinguish these opinions and um, situations that people come up with? Well, I think that Paul gives us a glimpse of this in Philippians 4, 4 through 9. So let's read together and see what Paul has to say in Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition. With thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God will transcend all your understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice and the God of peace will be with you. So what Paul is saying here is you think about the things that are noble and right and pure. Well, where do we get these from? This guy, our Bible. Our Bible is what speaks to us, okay? The overall concept is said of this passage is to know God's truth, not what you think it would be, but what the Bible actually says it should be, right? This book here. We all have different versions and different things, but it's what the Bible tells you is right and noble and pure and admirable, right? The Bible is a tool in this, and God lays out what is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, and admirable. We use the word of God to help you stay focused on his truth and not what others say is true. So if someone says this, you come back to your book and says, no, God says that's not true. So what you're saying is wrong, but what the Bible said is true. Philippians, to stay in Philippians, we'll go chapter one, verse 10. For what I, for what, for I want you, excuse me, to understand what really matters so that you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. God's truth is the Bible. It's what we all should be holding on to, not our own ideas for truth, not what we think is right and what we think is wrong, not because we feel that this feels some kind of way about this or that, but what the Bible tells us is 
true. And the Bible talks about life all the way across this entire book. And God tells you what you can see is right and wrong. That's what the Holy Spirit is for too. It's actually a guide to give, to show you the truth. You know, Bible says without the Holy Spirit, we would be deceived by the enemy. So we know that the Bible is, the Bible teaches us, it feeds our spirit, our Holy Spirit, and that's how we get through life. And that's how we know what's right and what's wrong, what's true and what's not. So I encourage you to stay in your Bible, to continuously read your Bible, to understand God is giving you his truth, not world truth. And they're easy sometimes to get sucked into the world truth because we don't read our Bible and don't know what God says is right, wrong, and true, and admirable, and all those. So remember, stay focused with your Bible. This is a tool God gave us to learn about him, not only just that, but to tell us what is right and wrong and what is true and not. So I encourage you to stay in your Bible, to read it, to pray to, your, to, pray to God whenever you get a chance, and to just stay focused on him. So as always, I love you guys. I hope this was a blessing to you. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you for watching. As a reminder, um, click down low and leave a comment if you um, if you have any questions or yeah, if you just want to leave a message. Um, make sure to like, subscribe, and we will see you next time.